It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Thursday, December 22nd, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that is ready for some mid-afternoon hockey, Russ. Yeah, I'm not ready for it. <laughs> All right, we're going to preview the matchup this afternoon against Toronto. Plus, we are going to do a prospect profile on Alex Gendron and get to so much more all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, once again, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Flyers. That is where you'll keep up to date on all our episodes and Flyers news. You can also email the show at LockdownFlyers at gmail. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you get your podcasts. So subscribe. You will get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Plus, we're over on YouTube if you want to see our smiling faces as we talk about the Flyers. Just a quick programming note because of the holiday coming up. Uh, We will be having a Friday episode, a regular episode, where we're going to recap the Leafs game and preview the Carolina game. Uh, We will also have a special episode coming out on Saturday. Yes, an early Christmas present. That will be a World Juniors preview. Uh, And it should be pretty exciting. We're going to bring on Mm -hmm. Chris Peters, uh, who is a prospect expert and goes to all these things. We've had him on the show before. Excited to talk to him as well. So uh, looking forward to bringing both of those episodes to you. Uh, Russ, we may have found out why Felix Sandstrom did not play versus Columbus. And that is because he is sick. Uh, he is not traveling with the team to Toronto. Sam Erson was called up, and I'm guessing that's what was going on there. Or they could have called up Erson when they knew he was sick and had Erson play. Like they could have done that. I still yeah, think it I... was it, it was a lot for Hart. I I have this s- sneaking suspicion, just like a few of the media members next to me, that Hart's playing both these next games. I mean, I, I just don't see it happening any other way with, you know, two of the top five teams in the league. Uh, you know, the Canes just overtook New Jersey, I believe, in the division. Yeah. So uh, I think that it is a very real possibility and uh, not not ideal, I'm going to no. say, just because of him not having gotten the rest. And yeah, yeah I think Sam Merson could have handled it. I really mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. Based, you know, the way we've seen him play in Lehigh Valley, um, they play him a lot there too, and he just manages to to do that really well. And so, getting called up and playing one game against Columbus, I think, would have been okay for him. Yeah, it would have been nice, actually. You know, could have been a nice little carrot for him, and mm-hmm. uh, be a good way for us to see him at the NHL level to see how he's developed since he's gotten hurt. I, I would have enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. It looks like the lines are going to stay pretty consistent for the Flyers at practice yesterday. Uh, Scott Lawton was out for a maintenance day, so the Nick Sealer forward experience was there (laughs) for practice. (laughs) Uh, So they had him slot in there for Lawton just to keep everything else the same. But uh, other than that, it, it looks like they seem to at least like what they've seen recently, especially from those top two lines. Well, there's a little subterfuge going on here. So as an example, last game, Zach McEwen had the same amount of minutes as Kevin Hayes. So Kevin Hayes is still not getting regular minutes. It's really a game-to-game situation. And if the coaches don't like what they see, 
he's not getting out there in certain situations. Um, whereas if they love what Travis Connecty is doing, Torts is putting him out there for everything, literally everything, and as much as he yeah. can. Yeah, I mean, he said that directly. Yeah. He said, you know, he's a ball of energy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he can do anything. And, you know, it took us a while to be able to get him out there on the PK, but we did it and we love it. And clearly, he scored that shorthanded. They're goal doing one so. thing that we talked about last year. We said they've got to bring the old Connecty back and just kind of let him get his, you know, feistiness in the game and whatever. And, and they are. They're letting him do that. Yep. And and that has brought back his confidence. But, and the but is, Torts also said, when they become a contending team, he is going to have to reel all of that in a little bit as far as playing a little better defense because, like, there was a time where he helped give up a goal last night, um, the last game. So that's the thing where, again, that's going to – there's a little transformation that's still going to have to take place, but at least it's good to see – all the other facets of his game working really well. Yeah. And, you know, on the Hayes side of things, I think that, you know, and we said as much on yesterday's show that the victim here is Scott Lawton, right? Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. not getting effective t line mates right now to be able to work with to the best of his skill. And if Hayes is getting punished, does that mean Scott Lawton gets punished at the same time? It just throws a lot of things into flux. That's all. So, like, to me, these lines don't mean much except the fourth line and the first line. Everything else kind of is in flux. Yeah, and they seem to be pretty solidly on the Noah Cates as a center now train, which is yes. fine. It's just, you know, there's always this question, are they going to rotate him back out? Um, I think Joel Farabee will keep his top six slot at this point, you know, given the personnel and the combo, I think, you know, was was working OK. I just wonder if like maybe after a game or two, we'll see how he does against Toronto, obviously. But if Wade Allison gets moved up to the third line uh, with a little bit more ice time and they move McEwen back down, which would be yeah. more ideal, I think. Yeah, that would be. I mean, and look, Allison only got a little over 10 minutes last game. Uh, it was noticeable a few times, but it's been a while. And, right. you know. Would it have been more, I mean, better if he had played, you know, a weekend in Lehigh? Yeah, it would have. But, no, nobody does that now. Well, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning do. <laughs> That's I know. for sure. I've it's seen true. some NHLers get some rehab stints with. Syracuse, I mean, when you're away so. six weeks, you should go down and do that. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about that before. It's, yeah. uh, it's something they don't employ. And then, you know. Uh, Sam Erson gets the call up and you know will somebody else get any you know rehab stints down there or put Sandstrom in a game down there just to mm -hmm. you know switch it up a little bit but uh, yeah I don't know Flyers you know when you're being criticized for your medical staff and guys coming back too soon or you know there's a question mark or a distrust with you know, how people come back from injury and you don't utilize that capability to have a rehab stint, th that just adds to the questions. That's when you run into trouble. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, for the Flyers, it's going to be a tough couple of games to start this road trip. And I, I certainly hope that they can get some, some good out of it, but, uh, we are going to talk about the first one of those games this afternoon against Toronto coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball, soccer, esports, and of course, the NHL. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts just like ours, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. 
Check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available wherever you get your podcasts. Russ, the Toronto Maple Leafs are a bit of a juggernaut right now. Yeah. Um, Their most recent game and, you know, the reason why I knew about Tampa Bay using Syracuse as a rehab stint is because the Leafs just won versus Tampa Bay four to one. And it was mentioned during that game. And, you know, they have lost a couple recently uh, to the Caps and the Rangers, but overall uh, they're seven, two and one in the last 10. So that was like the only two losses they had in, in their last 10 uh, Rangers, of course, coming back strong. Um, you never know what the caps, but I, I think that it's going to be a tough order. Um, I, I There's just no two ways about it. The depth that the Leafs have is kind of beyond uh, a, what a lot of what the Flyers have faced recently and you know despite all the injuries right because Morgan Riley's been out Jake Muzzin's been out Victor Mate has been out um it, it's and now Rasmus Sandin is out so it's really on the defensive side of things that they're a little bit weaker than normal right now yeah and um and Jason Robertson's brother Nick is out too because He's been out long. He's out long term now, but he could have right. been a guy that you know they would like to have in the lineup now too with all these Fair injuries. Um, but they do. I just want to illustrate they've they've got a lot of injuries. Um, it's interesting because they do three things really well. They they cycle the puck well uh, when they want to. At times they'll put Tavares, Matthews, Nylander out there, uh, just or Tavares, Matt, Marner, Matthews to really um, control the puck. And that's something where you have to watch out for because if they get ex- extended zone time, they try and get one of those matchups out there, especially at home. And that's where the Flyers are going to be in trouble because uh, they'll just control the puck. They won't always score, but they could grind you down a little bit. Um, and that's the thing in this game is you have to worry about their puck possession. They do have some size too, and they do have a lot of mm-hmm. skill. So it's like you don't get a lot of breaks uh with their offense covering their offense now on defense you get some breaks in the sense that you know justin hall is very physical but he's not great he will is prone to mistakes giordano's old but early in games he's really really good he might be able to tire him out by the third period but not always uh second second pairing is pretty good uh you know jordy ben's been really good for them and timothy lilligren's terrific yeah Uh, he's finally getting a chance uh, yeah, you know, Jordy Ben is the one who they've slotted in uh, yeah. instead of Sandine while yeah. he's out and, right now. And TJ Brody and Connor Timmons has done really well since they picked him up. So, you know, they're not going to, the Flyers won't see as much of that third pairing anyhow. So, honestly, what they did against New Jersey is not going to work. If they try and dump and chase, it's not going to work because these guys have too they many have the guys. Speed, right? <laughs> yeah, they do. And it's not like the Devils don't. But these guys have speed, but they have some bigger players, which get they get there faster, even with the longer stride. So I don't think that's going to work at all. I think what they have to do is just keep the puck out of their zone, and they have to they're going to have to control the puck for a part of this game. Like they're going to have to, because even if they're down three goals, Toronto can come back and and win a game, and that's a dangerous you know situation for the Flyers. So. You know, yeah, they're not of, as good at holding leads as no. we have seen. No, and so honestly, yeah, the Flyers definitely need to play from um, play from ahead. Uh, playing from behind with the Leafs, you might get one or two back, but you're not gonna. Uh, most of the time, you're not gonna beat them that way. Their goaltending has been very good. Matt Murray is one; well, he's healthy now and he's playing great. Will he, will he stay healthy? That's always the question. And Sam Sonoff's done really well for him too. So they're they're tandem has been good so no matter who they yeah. face that that part's not going to be a break either so this is a really really hard one for the flyers yeah one thing i want to talk about with the leafs uh because it's my pet project is the five forward power play yeah and they rolled it out uh 
because they could, frankly. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I talk about the Flyers, like they're just not a team that can do that because they don't have the right group with the right skills to be able to pull it off. Right. Well, but the Leafs can do it. Now, por- partially they're doing this because Morgan Riley's out yes. injured and he would normally be out there on the unit. But Mitch Marner has the defensive skills. And so he they does. put him at the point and then they can have Matthews bunting, Nylander, and then Tavares net front. Right. It's a and hell of a lineup. There. I know. <laughs> That is a really good power play unit. And they rolled it out against Tampa and it looked really good. And the thing about this kind of a unit is the puck movement is going to be extraordinary. It's going to be quick. It's going to be precise. And the Flyers PK is not great in at dealing with those sorts of situations. No, they're good at shot blocking and they can converge a little bit uh, in that box, but they're, they're not good if they, if Marner starts crossing over and going from one yep. side to the other, they're going to get jumbled. It's going to happen. They'll have three guys on one side before you know it. So that's that's where it, it's going to be a problem. And, you know, Matthews is going to be, you know, maybe not in a slot, but around there. That's another problem. Uh, it, they have to keep him off the power play. I mean, honestly, we say it, but it really is true for this one. Uh, I would play this game with no shenanigans. Now, look. No. If Bunting does something and he's stupid about it, fine. As long as you and Bunting go off the ice, it's fine. But don't start with the extra stuff after the whistle. Don't look for fights. Even though Deloria should not be looking for a fight in this game. No, because the that power play is just too dangerous to risk yeah. it for something that is not useful. Like, you have to take a guy down because he's on a breakaway. Okay. Right. But, like, just... Don't get into that extracurriculars if you really don't have to. You know, somebody takes a run on Carter Hart. Okay. You, you know, there's situational needs, sure. but but be smart about it. That's like the key here is they have to be super smart about it and have some discipline because, you know, you talk about those guys. They've got four guys over 30 points this season and Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Tavares on that power play unit. <laughs> like, yeah, a chances big guy- are they're going to get one. Yeah, a big guy that they just got back, Kelly Yarncroke, helps because, you know, they had Malgin on the second line and he's really not uh, even close to a second line or now he's not even on the team. Um, so, or with the team. So that's something that's different. You know, Dryden Hunt's in the lineup now. We knew him from the Rangers. Eh, mm-hmm. He's nobody to worry about, but Holmberg is really good. Holmberg is a young guy who is excellent with puck possession, is always around the net. Joey Anderson, who's Mikey's brother, uh, does have a scoring touch, but hasn't really fully shown it yet, but they still are giving him a chance. So even the fourth line, you're not getting a big break and the Leafs are going to roll all four. They are, and yeah. unless they're, unless they're playing from behind, then you'll see a steady diet of their top six. Yeah. And if, uh, you know, their recent track record says anything, they're not going to play Wayne Simmons. Uh, no. he's, he's been an extra, they put him on waivers. So uh, unfortunately, if you were looking to see our old pal in this one, I don't think it is going to happen. No, I don't think it'll happen. And look, even Aston Reese was playing good for them, but now that they've gotten some players back, right. you know, he can't get in the lineup. So it's a good lineup. They're playing well. This is a you know not an ideal matchup. You can't at do a the, weird time of day that yeah, throws weird, everybody off. That definitely they're they're definitely slow starters on day games to begin with. And even though they won their last game, you can't play it the same way against these guys. So we'll see. This is one where the coaching matters. It matters a lot. Yeah, the matchups are going to be huge. Absolutely yeah. huge. If, uh, Especially with Leafs getting last change, like Torts' ability yes. to get those matchups is going to be much more difficult. And the Flyers having limited resources in terms of matching up against these guys uh, it, it is going to be a tough road. I mean, the coach is talking about zone entries, and they're still having trouble with it on the power play, which is just mind blowing to me. At Fifty games. Well, zone exits. Season. Let's let's start with zone exits before yeah. we get to the entries. No, but he but he talked about that. Either way, I agree with you. The problem is when you got a guy like Marner, he could score shorthanded goals. He is going mm-hmm. to get at least one shorthanded chance. You could pretty much take it to the bank. So these are things that you know the Flyers were you know, giving up chances like that odd man rushes against Columbus. Now you really have to watch it, especially when you're on the power play. 
So let's hope that, you know, they figured out a few more things on the power play. They think it's getting better, but I don't know. All right. Well, we'll see how this one goes, friends. <laughs> uh, I wish I could know, be man. more positive. This is a tough one. Yeah. Well, you know, let's look for, you know, some of the young guys to step up again and uh, maybe make an impact on this one and see what they're like up against a team like the Leafs. And uh, speaking of young guys, we have a Flyers prospect we are going to talk about next in Alex Gendron. And now an important message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride? Nah. You live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again, play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever drive sober or get pulled over. Russ, in looking at some of the Flyers prospects, I wanted to talk about Alex Gendron mm -hmm. for one main reason and that he just got traded in the queue. And when players get traded at a junior level, um, usually it's because, at least in my observation, uh, you have a situation where you have a very good player on a not so good team that you want to, you know, give some more opportunity to and have them play around slightly better players and have that team work toward a, a championship. And, and that is what has happened here. Uh, he was on the Armada and now has been traded to Gatineau, uh, Claude Giroux's old stomping grounds. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the transaction was for a player and a couple of picks. So multiple assets here. And, uh, you know, he was a seventh round draft pick for the Flyers. So you wouldn't normally like highlight a guy like this. But um, if we recall, he is the son of Flyer scout Marty Gendron. And so there was some buzz about that and that Marty didn't want to draft him. But Brent Flair did it anyway. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, you know, just saying oh, he was top on the board at the time, uh, 220th overall. And so given the trade and given the Flyers connection, I thought it'd be good to check in on him. And he is having a very good season on a very bad team so far. Now we understand the Q is a high scoring league, but yep. at the same time, you know, he's got 34 points in 29 games, 22 goals, 12 assists. And, uh, you know, the big note that I've seen about his play is that he just doesn't have the support around him. And so this move, is good for him. Yeah, I'm sure the move will be good for him. I mean, you know, he's a young guy, not the biggest guy at 5'9". Uh, we saw him in camp. I've seen him in a few different situations. I think he's a really good passer. I think he's, an, you know, he's got a great shot. But um, he is a guy that has trouble fighting through traffic with uh, bigger players. I did see that at camp. Uh, he also... While he has good instincts, he has good hockey instincts, still really needs to work on uh, his overall game. But there's definitely something there. There's some speed there. There's a guy there that knows how to shoot, when to shoot. He can work the power play. You know, there is talent there. The um, the thing that we're going to find out over time is, is, is he just a quadruple A guy? And right, right now he kind of feels that way to me. But it, there's time. There's plenty of time. He could go a long way before, you know, three, four years before we really have to make that decision. So it's good that he's playing well. That's a big thing. It's good that he's going to a better team. Gatineau's a heck of a place. I've been there. Yeah. Uh, I've loved I, – I went to their old rink, which was really, really small, but I understand they got a new one now. Um, so, yeah, it's a good place. Let's see, you know, continue to see how he does. Obviously, 
He's not really getting on any of the um, specialty teams for Canada, you know, World Juniors or anything. There's too much right, competition. Right. I get that. Um, maybe when he's 19, they'll give him a camp, look in camp because it really is a 19-year-old tournament anyhow. But still, there's something there. Uh, as a seventh-round pick, you're always rooting for these guys. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest part of it is that being a seventh round pick, you know, you can you can look at it like, oh, there's not a ton of pressure on him because expectations aren't that high and he can work on what he needs to work on kind of in peace uh, without a ton of eyes on him. But also there's a lot of pressure on him to get better if he wants to have a shot. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do on Gatineau and see what kind of ice time he gets and who his line mates are in terms of, are they top level prospects or, or not? Um, you know, because of the holidays, they're on a, a little bit of a break right now and their mm -hmm. next game isn't until December 28th. So that should be his debut. Uh, want to, want to see how that goes, but I, I think based on what I've read and, and what I've seen, you know, he really does need to work on his skating uh, because you're right. He, he doesn't have the physical presence to get no. through body. So he's got to get around them somehow. Right. And, and he doesn't have the skill. Quite no, yet he's got like straight line that. speed. You're right. I mean, right. Like right. Crossovers, things like that. Uh, edge work. That's where he um, needs to work on it a bit. But, you know, I think he can improve in those areas. And then it's going to be like, Hey, you've, you know, he, he's not like thin or rail thin or anything, but you know, he's going to have to get some man strength. He doesn't necessarily have to put on more pounds, but he has to get stronger. Um, yeah. And we'll see. And we'll see. Cause I can tell you, you know, watching a lot of game film on him, some of the way he's getting points in that league, he's not going to be able to get even in the AHL. So, you know, best wishes to him with Gatineau. Yeah. And uh, I, I do want to keep an eye on him. Um, if you happen to watch the December 30th Gatineau game, they will be putting a banner up for Elaine Vigneault. <laughs> so uh, our old friend there. I believe and Simone Gagne has a banner. No, he's in Quebec, he right? He's in Quebec. That's where I saw his. Yeah. No, Giroux has his number. Giroux, there. Giroux does. But there's somebody else, too. Um I forget. I went on a whole Quebec know. trip that time, but yeah, Elaine Vigneault deserves it. He he is a legend yeah. in in junior hockey. So yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, so uh, that'll be good to see uh, as well. And uh, good luck in Gatineau. Um, uh, wrapping up with our Flyers fun thing, we got a teddy bear count from the Phantoms, and it is a lot of teddy bears. Uh, they had 8,480 bears. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So a lot of kids will be getting a, a nice present for the holidays. No, it's great. I, I love it. I mean, I think it's it's a great thing. It, it really is and makes me happy. And it's fun to see it on video. Like, I just don't know who sits there and counts at all. Like, I, oh, you know who? Um, I knew there was another former flyer. Max Talbot has his number. Oh, right. Retired right, right, That's right. That's what it was. Uh, cool. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Uh, like I said, we'll be back tomorrow with a recap of this Leafs game. We'll look ahead to the game against Carolina. Plus, it's Festivus, so we will have our airing of the Grievances. Yes! I know! That will be so much fun. And then we'll have our World Juniors preview for you over the weekend. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. Send in your mailbag questions via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail, or you can comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus their instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available Odyssey, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great day, everyone.